very warm welcome to another episode of today's parent where we connect with experts and provide you with information to make your parenting journey a bit more easier i'm your host christine Cassina. in today's episode we are talking about raising girls specifically raising teenage girls in studio today we have an expert who's not only a marriage expert but also a family therapist an expert in every way who's going to take us through raising teenage girls to be the best that they can be. Her name is Rosalind Keegan and she runs her own platform, Intentional Parenting for a Better Life. Let's welcome her to the show. Rosalind. Yes, thank you so much for having me again. Lovely to have you back. Yeah, it's fun. It was fun. It's fun coming. Yeah. Lo lovely to have you back. Thank you so much. I'm just wondering what's the difference between raising girls and raising boys? Wow. It's a big, it's, it's, it's different, yeah, because um, it's easier to connect with the uh, girls. Compared to boys? We, we, are, we are natural. Connecting to a girl, all you need to do is connect with her emotions. Yeah. And to any woman, you only, all you need to connect is their emotions. For a boy, connecting to, to a boy is... You really need to work extra hard to connect, find out what what is going on in a in a, in a boy's mind. Yeah. And even yeah. just opening up. And even opening up, it takes a while. Even when they come for therapy, it, it takes a while. And there are a lot of things we do for even a boy to open up, start talking to you. Right. Yeah. So what makes what makes teenage girls so special? Wow. Um a, a teenage a teenage girl is going through a lot. At the age of 13, the first time they see their periods, and if they are not prepared, they go to school, they get their periods, they'll be laughed at. That's another self-esteem going down. Absolutely. Yeah. Their, uh, their breasts are growing. Yeah. They're now becoming, they're evolving now to become a woman. So the special thing about them is they need to be, as early as possible, they need to be, they need someone to talk to them. Right. But just how to how they are going to become how they're becoming women. What will happen? Their body changes. Yeah. They have to have somebody around. There's nothing as bad as um a teenage setting a child a teenage girl starting their periods with no one no one has told them that uh, this, this is what is, this going, is, to what to is going to happen and this is what to do and this is what to expect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is it different or will it have been different? If you have a girl, in fact, my question should be, is there a way or what you need to be doing from the time they are starting age, even before they hit teenagehood, mm. how we raise our girls? What can we do prior them reaching teenagehood? Um, number one, if, if you're a father out there and you're a father of a girl, plug into that girl's life. Because when they reach, they grow up, when they reach teenagehood, even when they are young adults and adults, they always follow up. They always, there's always a void, and the void comes from the man in their family. Right. Yeah. Because they say we marry our fathers, so you need to be the best man in your in your in your child's life, in your daughter's life. Yeah. And 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 if you're a mother, is is you need also to understand who you are as a woman, because a confident mother brings on, brings out a confident. Uh, uh, girl. girl, yeah, and um, if you don't have confidence and and you're ashamed of yourself or there's some issue, it you to rub off onto onto this girl, yeah. Um, and the notion of um, especially uh, for mothers, and we have that weakness of uh, my, uh, my my stomach is. I have a big stomach, my hips are too big. Self image so, issues. Yeah, yeah. I need to do this shake and that shake. It rubs off to the girl. So the girl will grow up identifying as, you know, if mom has issues with her body, even me, my body might not. It, uh, I'll, I'll also have issues with the body. So you find a little girls, a girl as, as young as 10 years will say, hey, look, look at my stomach, look at my hips. Yeah, because where has he had those things coming most from? Most likely from the females from, around you, yeah, more, more around her, most likely the mother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you need to have that confidence. You need to, as a mother, have that confidence as a woman. So to bring up that confidence of from your girl, from your daughter. All right. Yeah. What challenges? What challenges do parents face, or they can anticipate to face if they're raising a teenage girl? Um, self-esteem. So self-esteem is a big thing. Self-esteem is is a big thing. 
the, the, when they reach uh, 13, somewhere from the age of 12, 13, they really want to be liked. Teenage girls <laughs> want to be liked, they want to belong. They want to be told how they are good, yeah? That's why the, the, you'll find that even when, you, when they're in school, they're the ones who are doing, at the age of 13, 14, they're the ones who are doing everything. The ones, the teacher to like them, the ones to be known by the teachers. They're driven to that feeling of, you know what, I need to belong. I need to, 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 to do better than everyone else. Right. So for, for a parent, if you're not there at that space where you affirm yeah. your child, they'll, at that small age, she'll find affirmation from somewhere else and she'll start from there. Yeah, knowing that at home there's no one who recognizes how good I am. Yeah. So it's very important to bring up a child, a, a daughter who has self-esteem, who has the confidence and knowing who they are. Yeah. Uh, by the time they're 16 years old, they should know, they should know what, they, what they really are at that stage. Another challenge, uh, as I say, is social media. They, they want to look, they want to, they're very interested in how many people like their photos. And the comments, girls are very good at body shaming each other, yeah. And, they, and they'll say it blankly, like you have big thighs, wow. you have bad eyes, you have, yeah, your teeth are bad, and they'll say it. And, Commenting and on somebody's on photo. somebody's photo, and they'll go to school and they'll still keep on that discussion. They, I've been called, there's a school I was called to, uh, mm -hmm. and that happened. And we had to call parents and we had to talk to parents and tell them, you know what, you need to train your children how to, how to what to comment on. Because internet never forgets. So what tips did you give, the, uh, give to the parents? Just talk to the children. It's, it's, it took the children about the internet. I mean, it's like abusing. You know, for them, for a 16, 15 year old child, they have no idea, they don't know that they're actually uh, abusing this, this other girl. In their mind, they're looking for popularity. Yeah, so the more I say something, and they're using those funny words, the more I say it, the more popular I am. It's about being liked. Remember, I told the girls just want to be liked. Yeah, so so you just tell them, you just talk to your parents. The other thing is boys. Talk to your teenage girls. Talk to your teenage girls. Right. The other thing is boys. Yeah, and they're at, at a stage where they want to be liked by, by the opposite sex. By the opposite sex. I wonder, is, is that a challenge for the girl or a challenge for the parent? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a challenge for both if you've not talked to this girl on the boundaries and the limits. Yeah. Because for them they believe at that age they'll if you've not talked to them, they'll believe the more boys like you, the more popular you are, the more good you are. But they, at the back of the mind they don't know that you're being wasted by by by, 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 by these boys. By the boys, yeah. Yeah. You know today interestingly I've sat with parents of uh, boys. And they've told us, and they've said, you know what, the girls are not being very, very independent. They're being very forward. They're the ones who are going for their boys. They're forcing, which is true. The girls of nowadays, they're really going for those boys and forcing the boys to be their friends and writing notes. Like, I like, like you being my like boyfriend. I like you being my boyfriend. And they'll write <laughs> notes and they'll write notes and they'll force this boy to say yes. And Where are they getting like this from? Where are the girls yes. getting this from? It's just, they have confidence now. The girls are, have been, are becoming very confident. Yeah, they're being very confident more than even <laughs> the boys. I think something needs to be done about that. During my time, we never used to be like that. Not dare. Yeah, we wouldn't dare. We wouldn't, wouldn't dare approach a boy like that, yeah. Yeah. So social media is a challenge. Social media. You mentioned self, uh, self, self esteem, esteem issues. The other thing, like, let's not forget about alcohol. Wow. You know, especially as now as they approach into 17, 16, even, even uh, uh, 18 years. Since they want to be liked and they want to belong, they have this party. Now that, in fact, it's holiday time. The holiday season is coming. It's already here. Is a group of young girls, yeah, will go in a house or they'll be invited in a house and they'll start testing alcohol. Those house parties. Those house parties and, and they'll set alcohol. And we've been, we've been, You've seen when uh, uh, parents taking their children because of blackout hospital, and they've got this uh, a good girl, good girl who just went to a party, and the parent thought they were just drinking soda and there's alcohol, yeah. Just because why? Girls just want to be liked. Girls just want to belong. Girls just they're very emotional. They just want you know what? I want to belong to this group, and if these people are taking alcohol, even me, I'll taste. And it's your first time you'll have a blackout. You'll end up in a hospital. 
Yeah, so so it's very raising a girl is very interesting. It's very <laughs> very very interesting. In fact, you know what? Nowadays, it's no more so. Uh, during my time, uh, my parents it was so much about pregnancy. So much about pregnancy. Because one of, well, that's one of the biggest challenges for parents, mm -hmm. even for teenage girls themselves. Yeah, yeah. That fear yeah. for pregnancy Pre sometimes is even more for some of them compared to. You know, getting HIV yeah, yeah. any other mm. STD. Yeah, because because it will be known, because it will be seen. Yeah. Uh, so again, again, girls, they are, they might be confident, but they're very delicate. Because if you tell them, if you just tell them something small, yeah. The like girl will be moody the whole day. Like your hips are big. Oh yes. Or your eyes are big. Oh, your eyes are big. Yeah. Uh, or oh, you're so black. Yeah. yeah. You're so black. Yeah. Yeah. But and then they see that, apparently, especially those 15-year-olds, <laughs> 14, and they'll tell you, and, and the mood will change. You've dropped your child happy, you pick your child annoyed. When you tell them, I'm, I'm not talking, and if you insist, as somebody told me, I'm black. And to I'm them it's a big dark. deal. And for some and of them, them it's a big for a lifetime. Yeah. For a lifetime. Yeah. So you see, it's, for a girl, it's about the emotion. It's a lot about the emotion, the body image, and all that. And where does it come from? Yeah, it comes from what they see in the house and what. So you have to build up a, the father of that child of the of the of the girl has to be around that girl, even more than the mother. You mentioned something about alcohol. Yeah. At some point, mm -hmm. most yes. girls, most women, eventually, you know, have their sip of wine and then decide whichever brand they settle for. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, when it comes to alcohol mm. and sensitizing our girls mm. on, you know, just a good drinking behavior, if at all, mm. you, they learn it from the parents. Is there any role that we play as parents? Mm. You know, our drinking behavior, does it then, you know, model to our children? Is there a way we can raise girls to, I shouldn't say drink better, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? but they're seeing what we are doing. <laughs> I hear you. Or should I say a responsible Drink. drinker? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Eh? <laughs> Drinking is... Uh, alcohol is a disease. Alcohol or alcoholism? Alcoholism is a disease. Yeah? And depending on your lineage. Yeah? Because when they come to... We, when you, they come to therapy, we look at all these things. Yeah. Your family the of origin. And all that. Yeah, yeah. Do you have alcohol in, in... So that's one of the questions. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you want to introduce also in your in that space of yours? So the best way is if you can avoid alcohol, yeah, the better. Because there are some people who will take one. <laughs> some people will take one and... You see where I'm okay. going, yeah? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people who will take one glass of wine or one beer and they'll be okay. But there are some who cannot. So it's, it's very important also as a parent is, is to understand, to research and understand what is it in alcohol. In my family of origin, how many people have suffered through alcoholism? Yeah. Because it is there, it comes out, it comes out. It will come out. Why, and why are you opening that door for your, for your child? For your child, yeah. So I, I really I would advise against opening that door for your child. We are going to take a short break. In today's episode, we've been talking about raising teenage girls. So far, Rosalind Keegan has shared the challenges that we face as parents when it comes to raising teenage girls. When we come back from the break, she's going to share tips with you on how we can effectively parent our teenage girls. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from the break. In today's episode, we are talking about raising teenage girls. So far, Rosalind has shared the challenges that we face as parents raising our teenage girls, and now she's going to share with us tips on how we can do better. Rosalind, yeah, yes. Let's talk about the tips that comes, the tips that come to mind. Hmm. How we can do better as we are raising our teenage girls, understand them better, communicate better with them, hmm. open the channels of communication, get to understand them better. Mm. From your expert view, what can we do better? Get in touch with their emotions. Teenager girls, in fact, any most of the women, if you want to do better with any woman, get in touch with their emotions. Understand who they are. Okay. As a as a as a person, give them space. 
What do you mean uh, by give them to, space? Yes, give them space to be what they are. Let them evolve in front of you. Give them space to be who who they are. Don't don't create the person. Let God's creation come out. Let it watch come, her let it, blossom. Let watch her blossom. Right. Of course, with guidance. So the only thing you do as a parent of a teenage girl is you guide them. What guidance can you offer as a it's, parent? It's for the tips. Number one, dressing. Dressing. That's yeah. a big one for girls. Yeah, it's a very big. And it's a fight for most mothers of girls. Yeah. What is that you're wearing? You yeah, don't what? go out like that? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you know, it's fashion. So even you as a parent, how much can you give in? And then the child, the teenage girl, how much will they give in? So it's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you're not going to dress your... Please, mothers, do not dress your teenage girl like you. Dress them as a teenage girl. So how can you have how can you have that sensitive conversation because the dresses have become shorter the trousers have become tighter everything has become tighter or shorter yeah started from the beginning when they see toddlers talk to them about how it's important to dress up nicely cover up uh, cover up yeah how much can you cover up the 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 love yourself in fact the, the most important thing for a girl is to love themselves if you love yourself as a girl you t you would want to dress short things or you know because you love yourself you love your body so the only way that yeah you, the only way you can love yourself and love your body is when your self esteem is high and for you to have a self esteem is high is your environment the fathers the men in their lives they have to be the ones to tell them you know what you're a beautiful girl no matter what affirm the girl affirm that girl affirm your teenage girl the esteem for a farm that they can have uh, uh, high esteem. Be the first one to date your, your, your daughter. Take them out for a date. What kind of words can fathers use when around their girls? Uh, number one, just tell them that they're beautiful. Oh, mama, mama, you are so beautiful. Yeah. Most beautiful tell, girl in yeah, the world. Tell them, I like the way you've dressed. I like that dress in you. Because when mothers say that, what happens is, <laughs> mommy, you are my mom, you'll say that. That's what they'll say. I know you, you have to say that. Whether I'm, yeah. But when a, when a man in that girl's life says you're beautiful, yeah, they take it very serious. And that saying, I love you, you're beautiful, should not be a one thing. It should be a constant. They should know at the back of their mind, my dad has my back. So you are encouraging our African dads to tell us that they love us. Yes. You know how hard that is, eh? Yeah, we never had it during my time. <laughs> yeah, but it's important for... So, uh, today's dad, today's dad to be please, able to vocalize it. Please vocalize, because the person who... The first man who will tell your daughter, and she's never heard it from any other man, I love you, she'll go... Hey, she, she'll everything will let go. She'll start from the father. Just she'll start and telling her how much... She'll start from the father, that you love, that you're good your confident. Yeah. Now, you know what? Um, at some point, she'll know when you start doing that when you're small, at some point when they reach the age of uh, maybe 15, uh, 13, mm -hmm. they already know they're beautiful. They're aware because it's been a drum. Yeah. So now you need to start saying, you know what? You're smart. You're bright. You're sharp. You can do this. So you see, beauty is already inbuilt when they were young. He already, they already know. Yeah. There's nothing else you can, you can, you can tell me. Dad has already come, uh, affirmed. So when a boy comes and tells me I'm beautiful, I already know I'm beautiful. <laughs> I know I'm pretty. So now comes, you know, the, the confidence of, 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 uh, of the intelligence. You're intelligent. You can do it. Yeah? Well, how far can you go? Just go. And that also the dad needs to tell them. You know what? As much as you're beautiful, you're also intelligent. Whatever marks you bring, work hard for yeah. it. Yeah? Yeah. Be proud of yourself and love yourself. The most important thing is for a, for a teenage girl is make sure you tell them to love themselves. Appreciate who they are as a person. And you know what? If as a mother, you don't love yourself, it will show. It will rub off. Absolutely. Teenage girl. It will show. If you're going looking for... Uh, uh, that affirmation from, other, from the opposite sex. Op and yeah. It will rub off. If you're not confident with your body, you know what? We are all beautiful. You are all beautiful. It's just the way you present yourself. You know, confidence is beauty. Yeah? 
Confidence is beauty. That's if true. I step out with my confidence, that's just enough. I'll take up the room. So this that's is true. what you need to bring up from a child. That's Let them true. be confident. Let them understand who they are. Yeah. Let them be. Uh, you know, there's, there's a confidence that borderlines to being rude yeah. or too much. But let them be confident in a feminine way. Yeah. And and to uh, just light out the room and show them. And you have to do it as a mother. And the father now needs to be in the words. And you take their hearts. That's how you raise a teenage girl. How do you talk to teenage girls about sex and boys? Look, if you have... That's a very good question. And I love a kind of a question. You should have started talking to them when they are small. When they are young. How small? Make them... Uh, you talk to them about sex to the level that they can understand. It needs to be introduced gradually, gradually. Right. You, when you sit down and wait, I'll wait and sit and until my daughter is 16 and start talking about sex. You wouldn't be able. Because maybe she knows when, more often than not, she knows, she knows more, more than you do. But when you started when, you're, when they were young, it's very important to catch up. And sex is beautiful. It's a very beautiful thing. We need to communicate that to our, our children. When we were grown up, uh, it was <laughs> branded as <laughs> the fear, which psychologically it's not good. That's why you get a lot of sexual dis uh, uh, dysfunctions. When I, when now when you there's so much fear on sex, yeah. but now on the wedding day, this the fear of sex is still in your mind. In your mind, and this is for both for both men and women. And you have a, a, a sexual dysfunction. They come for therapy, and when you go through them, you find this person was told, you know what, sex is bad. It is very bad. It is very bad. It's so bad. Yeah, you know, it is very some bad. of us. I, I remember in high school uh, stories we used to share in high school yeah. that if you sit on a on your on a boy's bed, yeah. you're going to get pregnant. Mm. Even just sitting <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on his bed. So yeah, so, so oh you, you bring gosh. in so much. So, so the, you need to find a way. And there are books there in the market that you can introduce and tell them in an age appropriate in, way. In age appropriate way on what happened to sex, pregnancy, uh, what happens. I mean, what what happens. And they are taught in school. Yeah. So you're just adding value. And yeah. if you cannot talk about the sex topic to your child, introduce it. Then call an auntie or an uncle who can do that. Right. There's always a community around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you should not be shy of talking about sex. It's very important. It's very important. It's a very important topic. All right. Yeah. So as you're winding up, mm. your top tips when it comes to raising teenage girls, mm. what comes to your mind? As a mother, be self-confident. So it. start with you as a mom, as start. a dad, be self-confident. Start with you as a mother. Know yourself, understand, love yourself, understand who you are. And when you're confident as a mother, the girl will also be confident. You're going to bring up a confident girl. And as a father, be in her life. Be That's the important. first one. That's important. To say she's beautiful. Be the first one to say, I love you. Be the first one to say, I love your dress. Be the first one to take her out for dinner. Be the first man in her life. Because you'll be the reference point. Absolutely. If my dad doesn't hit me, who are you to hit me? I didn't, I didn't see my dad hitting my mom. And I didn't see my dad hitting my mom. Yeah. Yeah. And then even tell them, it's not even about beauty. Tell them that they're intelligent. There they can be the best they can be. And be anything they want. Girls touch. For raising a girl, just touch the emotions. You get a woman's emotions, you've got it right. Go for their heart. Go for their heart. Even when the girls shut you out, how do you not give up as a parent, especially a parent of a teenage girl? You, you can never give up for, for your child. When a girl shut you out, maybe give them space, but to go to their level. What's going to their level? Go to where they are and find out what is it. If they're not talking to you, remember I've said about introducing a community around, around yes. them. Yes. Yeah. Ask somebody else to come in. And find out and what they like, like. We are friends. They like. like, yeah. Find out what, what is it, and also know who their friends are. Yeah, it's very important. Always go to where they are and at their levels, and they are moody. They're very, 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 very moody. How can a parent are... deal with that? You know, just coping with the fluctuation of today. I'm very happy. Like you said, I pick you from school. You're not talking to me yeah. anymore. Yeah. Just a parent deal with that without taking it personally. Like there's something it, they're not doing. You need to understand that it's it's 
they need to have studied. They need to, uh, Google can be very good. Just understand the face of your child. It, it's all there. You mentioned about closing. I don't understand. Or closing the door. The door. Keep closing. out. And a sign is put there, by the way. <laughs> Why would your child close the door in your house? I know someone who removed the door entirely. Yes. <laughs> That's a very good parent. Why would you start? It's your house. This should not be, it should be an open door policy house. I'll come into your room wherever I want. I might I might respect your space, yeah, no, but enter. you know that space is mine. I'm gonna pay the bill. So it's my house and I'll do that. My house, my room. Yes, 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 yes. And and if you started that when they were young, it it it'll be normal for them. <laughs> yeah. It will be normal. In fact when I when a child whose whose rules are the doors remain open goes to a friend where the doors are closed, they'll wonder. Because for them it will be abnormal. Yeah. So it's, it, I don't think you should allow teenagers. In fact, you should not even allow girls or even any teenagers to have a laptop in their rooms or even sleep with their phones. Because you know what, something happens at night. Yeah. I don't, yeah. That should not be a no no. That should be a no no. And then no wonder moods are coming up. Yeah. Because maybe they've been cyber bullied. Yeah, mm. and probably even not getting enough sleep as well. Yeah, not getting enough sleep. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's possible. Mm. Roslyn, thank you so much for coming to share once again. Karibu sana, karibu sana. I really? love the show. No, it's really nice to have you. If there's any parent out there, I'm sure in your practice you see a lot of parents. God forbid, I hope there are not so many mm. struggling to um, raise their teenage girls. Mm. How can a parent connect with you? Oh, yes. Um, we are. I do my practice at KMA Building. Upper Hill, uh, Block One, First Floor, and um, we have we have my parents who come, and most of the time is uh, identity issues, uh, just the mood scenes you've told. The the girl just shuts off. Right. Yeah. So they will come and we'll have a discussion. Feel free, and we also do talk. Do you have specific forums for raising teenage girls? Yes, we have uh, forums we can raise. Uh, we talk to parents. We also talk to the children. We have. Uh, talks with with parents, okay. and we learn from each other. Do you separate the parents? Well, I know some. I'm, I'm sure sometimes you combine all we, of them. Yeah, we combine, and then some we separate. You separate. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you so very much. Thank you so much for having me. And with that, we come to the end of today's episode of today's parent, where we talked about raising teenage girls, and we had tips from Rosalind Kigen who is a family therapist. I hope this show was very insightful to you. We are in here in studio at Little Cribs, the home of fun, exciting, and durable kids' furniture. If you're looking for more parenting resources, go to www.supermamas.co.ke. For previous episodes of Today's Parent, head on to the YouTube channel of Switch TV. We look forward to having you next time. Thank you for tuning in.